Well, I was 16 and um, it was a nice warm day, normal day. There was no um, idea it was going to happen. The room was already prepared for our cutting because in Sierra Leone we call it the cutting. So in that room, as I laid on the floor, another friend of my mom, who's quite big, she sat on my chest. She almost is sitting to keep me quiet from screaming because I was fighting and like, what's going on? And at the same time, people are pulling my clothing and pulling my knickers. So she came in with the knives and uh, little blades in her hand and a cloth was put in my mouth so I couldn't scream. And my legs were spread apart and I felt a sharp cut in between my legs. And after that, I screamed. I screamed so loud. As I speak to you, I can still feel the blade going to my skin. Female genital mutilation constitutes all procedures that involve partial or complete removal of the external organs of the female genitalia for non-medical reasons. And in 99% of cases, the procedure is done without any anesthetic. Instruments could be broken glass, razor blade, scissors, the time they do for me in FGM, it was my father's mom. And I was five to six years. I was very young. And when my mom coming, I find out she was very angry and cried. That day we were left by ourselves in that room for the next four days. I'm just crying. No one cleaned us up. We were still bleeding. My sore for me was just getting worse, but I couldn't tell anybody. There are lots of complications that arises um, as a result of female genital mutilation. Shock, um, death, because girls can die from excessive bleeding, or even um, tetanus infection, because um, using the same razor blades or the same equipment for a group of girls. As far as the Quran is concerned, there is nothing in the Quran which claims or states that we have to conduct female genital mutilation. It doesn't exist. There is no reliable or authentic sources or powerful sources in Islam which commands or which requires a young girl to undergo such a mutilation. The Bible is very clear. There isn't any requirement it doesn't make a woman more honorable. It doesn't make her more acceptable in the sight of God. Up to today, we have problems. We, 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 we thinking about always. Sometimes you are in the bus, you remember what happened when you are little. It's trauma. It's, it, this is it's tra traumatic. You feel trauma. After all of the ceremony, even when I came out, I become this very angry child. I feel um, humiliated and um, most importantly, I felt a level of betrayal for my family. Physically, emotionally, it has affected me terribly. There are times when I, I couldn't wash. That's how my depression got to a, a stage where for days on end, I would just lay in bed. I still have nightmares when I sleep. I have bad dreams of what happened to me 25 years ago. It stays with you forever, you know, because the scars will not go away. Female genital mutilation has lifelong effects on women. The long-term effect include obstructive labor during pregnancy, as well as pain during sexual intercourse. When I was having my 11-year-old um, daughter here in the United Kingdom at St. Thomas's Hospital. I was there for four days in labor because the area where they cut, that's the area that was supposed to stretch open. And because of the tissue and the way I was cut, it, there was no way for it to stretch. So it was time for me to give back, but the baby would not come. At this point, I thought I was going to die. 
there's just always this nagging, nagging pressure on your well-being and the, the, the flashback, the constant thinking, what happened that day, this people, and I love them. I love my aunt, I love everybody, I loved my grandmother, but I don't think they know what it means to have to go through this later on. They say it's a good thing, but nothing was good for me. Sometimes people do things not because they want to do wrong, but because that's all they've known. That's all they've seen. Sometimes they don't even know why they do it. And I think um, we now need to begin to speak to people one on one. I think we need to communicate more with communities. My message is don't do it. You are damaging your daughter's uh, physical and mental health. We love our children, we want uh, everything and every best good thing for them so we need to keep them safe and happy it is illegal in the uk how many people are aware that's illegal how many people are aware that if they send their daughter on holiday to egypt to get her circumcised there and come back they have committed a crime how many people not that many how do you advertise how do you tell people it is a crime This is a line that everyone can call and get help and talk to someone, uh, feel safe, feel confident that all the information is confidential. The person they will speak to will be very friendly, non-judgmental, understand that they might be struggling and that they might be worried about the shame associated, but we will not judge, we will just be there to listen and, and help as much as we can and it really is about picking up the phone and just talking out about this issue. My message would be think about the health of your daughter first of all. How important is her health to you? Don't forget that we have a scar that people don't see, you know, unless I tell you about it. You see me, I'm a very happy person, you know you will not know that this is what I'm going through. The NSPCC wants to eradicate child abuse. This is a form of child abuse and we need it to stop.